Okay, for the first part of this, we need to make a template. We're gonna make a five inch by five inch for the top and the bottom. So I measure directly from the edge. I wish I had a smaller ruler at home than a yardstick, but this is what I have. Um, remember when you do this, you're measuring from what would be the zero, one, two, three, four, five. If it doesn't say zero, at least not on my ruler or my yardstick, because it's cut off right there. Sometimes people will start measuring from the one and basically five minus one would be four. And I line up my two two nicks. So this is five inches by five inches. And I'm gonna put my name on this in case it gets lost. You also need to make a four by six. Unless you have a larger piece of printer paper, this is not gonna work. This cuts off just barely. Um, if you're in the classroom, I'm gonna give you a larger sheet of paper so that you can do this with one piece of paper. If you're at home, you might have to get two pieces of paper. So again, focusing on the measuring and lining the end of my ruler up with the edge of the paper because that's where the zero is. This is one inch, two inch, three inches, four inches, five inches, six inches. I'm making a mark perfectly level with six inches. And I'm scooting it up. And then I line up my ruler with those two little nick marks. You can see them right there, the two little nick marks right there. And I make a line. And then I'm, that's six inches, and then I'm going to measure four inches across this way. So one inches, two inches, three inches, four inches. Nick mark there. One inches, two inches, three inches, four inches. Nick mark there. And then this is four inches by six inches. Again, I'm writing my name. And then I'm going to get my scissors and I'm gonna cut both of these.
So that's step one for my box. I'm making a template. Um, a lot of times kids will say, hey, but this four inch by six inch template, it's a lot narrower than the five by five. This is to account for the thickness of your clay. So don't freak out about that. That's just to account for the thickness of your clay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to stamp my slab. I've rolled out a slab. If you are unsure about how to roll out a slab, you can go back and you can watch your, watch the beginning of the coffee mug demo. Okay, so then once you've done that, you use your templates and you get as many as you possibly can. So this is a bummer. I can't go this way. It's not quite big enough. I'm going to have to go this way. I'm going to see if I have a bigger slab later on. I'm definitely going to cut these right now. Um, when I do this, I cut three five by fives in case I mess up one of the tops or the bottoms. About 20. I can use that line right there. I'm going to cut three five by fives. 25% of the time kids mess up one of the walls. So these are the tops and the bottoms. Um, it's not a perfectly straight line, so I'm not going to do that. And then I'm going to keep one of the extra ones as a glazed test tile so that I can test out a couple glazes and see if I like them or not. Three, five inch by five inch. Three, three, three. Write your name on the back. Does anyone know something? Did you get to eat?
Seguro que te importa, estás ¿verdad? Pero ansiedad. Vamos a luchar. Vente conmigo, venga. Okay, so by the end of this first work step, you're going to have three, three, five by fives. So I have one, two, three. You're going to have five, four inch by six inches. These become the walls for my, my rectangle box, and these are the tops and the bottoms, but I have five of these. The reason I have an extra is so that just in case um, one of them dries out, one of them breaks, one of them isn't lining up just right, I have a backup. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is, if you notice when I'm standing this up, I have it flush back here but there's a lot of extra room right here. This is to a lot for the fact that when I'm gonna put the next wall up, I have to account for the thickness. So I did design this lesson so that these were bigger than these. We'll cut off the excess at the end, but it's important that the tops and the bottoms are bigger just to account for the thickness of the walls. Some of you are doing 3 eighths of an inch thick, some of you are doing a quarter inch thick, depending on your craftsmanship and um, how delicate you are with the clay, how confident you are with the clay. Everybody is a different artist and that's really um, something that's important to remember. Don't judge yourself based on what other people are doing. Just do what you need to do to make a box that you like. So again, I have three of these and I have one, two, three, four, five of the rectangles. To wrap these up, I am not putting a damp paper towel between them, but I am just going to put a paper towel so that they don't stick when I do put them in the bag. I don't want the weight to like sandwich them together. So I am putting a dry paper towel. I also do want them to dry out just a little bit before I build them so I would like them to go to leather hard. Right now they are plastic. I just rolled them out and stamped them and then cut them. So I do want them to be slightly firmer. This is called stiff slab construction. So just a little bit um, more stable. That way they're not flopping around. Um, it's hard to build something with the slab that is 
flopping every which way when you're trying to build it it's going all over the place so um, really plastic clay it's kind of hard to build with so I'd rather have a slab that's a little bit uh, stronger and then after I do this I'm gonna put it in a couple bags being careful of my corners And then I will put it in my cubby and get ready to work the next day.